Hello, everyone. My name is Lucille Vitale, and I am a Vice President for New York State PTA. Welcome to this workshop, Conflict Support and Resolution. I will be addressing the topic of conflict support and hopefully will give you information and the tools to enable and empower you to help resolve conflict should it arise. Next. What is the purpose of conflict support? There may be many reasons for the need for conflict support in a PTA. This would include the purpose of ensuring an overall healthy PTA, which enables them to fulfill their mission and their vision, and by also supporting all the volunteers while providing information and best practices. There are many benefits of conflict. Remember this, not all conflict is bad at all. There may be many great benefits to conflict, which can make leaders better and can serve as a great learning opportunity. From every conflict comes great learning. Good conflict support can leave you with a feeling of accomplishment, and it can also help you identify new leaders through proper handling of a situation. There are many things you should know before you step in and as you progress. Here are some of the essential questions to consider. You have to always make sure that it is a PTA issue. Um, you need to ask, and you may need to ask several questions as to whether it really truly is a PTA issue, or maybe it's an issue that needs to be handled by somebody else. Like an example, maybe a building principal should be called in or a superintendent should be called in. It may be a problem for the Board of Education. It may not be a PTA issue. So that's the first thing is always to identify if it is a PTA issue, should you be involved in this issue? Is it a legal situation, which is very, very important that you do not get involved in if it is a legal situation? Um, is this a job for a professional, which could be a lawyer or it could be another, in, another professional that needs to be called in? You have to determine if you are the best person to actually handle the situation. And you really have to be honest with yourself um, that you have no bias towards the situation, that you don't have any involvement in the matter. Um, you also definitely have to know whether it appears that the situation may have legal ramifications that goes beyond the scope of PTA and what a leader should do. Um, and again, we should never as PTA leaders give any kind of legal advice. Um, that's not something that we should be involved in. Um, the situation may call for escalation to law enforcement or professional legal support. That's always a possibility. So you really have to ask the questions to know whether or not it is truly a PTA issue and whether you should be involved in it. You should ask questions that help you to decide whether there, this is a PTA issue or whether the conflict should be handled by somebody else. Okay, is it, a, is it related to PTA? So you wanna see. Um, it might have some relation to PTA, but it still might fall out of, the, out of the scope of PTA where you need to get a professional in. Is this a school or a district issue? If it's a school building, um, if it's something to do with your district, this might not at all be a PTA issue and it would be something that you might want to refer to somebody else. It is, a, is it a personnel or an employment issue, which is something that we would never get involved in in the PTA level in any you know, employment or any personnel issue that comes with the schools or any buildings. Um, if it's not a PTA issue, you should decline further involvement and you can also suggest an appropriate course of action. Um, like let's say for instance, you have something going on in your classroom and it's your own personal classroom, even though it may be a PTA issue, it may be something that you want to refer to somebody else because you, you have skin in the game and you, you may be biased on that issue. So even if it is related to PTA, sometimes we still have to have somebody else come in and handle it because it might not be appropriate for you. 
Here are some essential questions that you want to consider. You have to be really, really honest with yourself. Are you the right person to step in? You might have been asked to help with the conflict resolution, but you might not be the right person to do it. It doesn't always have to be the president um, of a unit or a council um, or a director of a region to step in. It might be somebody else that can be you know, used to be able to do that. But you might be asked, but you might not be the right person to step in. So that could be something that you could refer to another PTA leader to be able to step in if it is truly a PTA issue. Have you ever been part of this conflict? If this is something where, again, like I just mentioned, you have some kind of bias or you have some kind of, you know, so-called skin in the game, it might not be something that you want to be involved in. If you've ever been involved in the conflict or you're currently involved in the conflict, then you are not the right person to be involved in the conflict support or the resolution of it. Um, do you have a stake in the outcome, which I just mentioned? If you have a stake in the outcome, if it's something where, let's say again, it's your child's classroom, it's your child's um, event, um, it has something to do with, um, with you personally or your children, that might not be something that you want to get yourself involved in. You might want to ask another leader to be able to do that. Do you feel strongly that you know the right way to solve this before hearing all parties? If you already have an opinion made up on this, then you are probably not the right person to be able to handle any conflict going on. Do you feel you should push for a particular end result? Um, are you being bullied or abused by people involved in the conflict? I will get into bullying more about that. Um, but if there's anything, any of these questions that you can say, yes, I, you know, I, I'm definitely involved in this, then this is not an issue for you to try to resolve. Um, this is not about your knowledge. You might have great knowledge about it or your abilities. Um, this is just sometimes you're just not the right person to step into that particular conflict. There may be at other times where you would be the perfect person to step in, but there may be times that you're not. And those are the times where you just have to say, I cannot handle this, but I can refer you to somebody that can. It's very important for successful conflict to use the proper tools. You wanna to always follow the laws and the regulations that apply to not-for-profit not organizations. That's first and foremost. You wanna follow Robert's rules of orders. You want to always use best practices and refer to bylaws and procedures of the particular unit when necessary. Always important, there might already be something in the bylaws that states that a particular event or a particular happening cannot happen. So the conflict could be resolved rather easily because it's already in the bylaws and procedures that either it can happen or it can happen. Um, you want to listen. Listening to as many people involved is extremely important to get all the facts and can give a fresh perspective to the situation. Always be self-aware and have an understanding of conflict resolution before stepping in. There are times where you might just not be the right person because of you not having a real understanding of how to resolve conflict. Well, that's fine. If you just really do not feel that you have the um, ability to do this, this is when you would refer it to somebody else. Okay, these are things that we do not do ever in conflict resolution. Again, I can't state this um, enough. We never give legal advice um, and we also never diagnose people with illnesses or disorders. We're not here to do that regardless of what your occupation is. Even if you are a lawyer, you're in the medical um, profession, you're here strictly in a PTA capacity and that's where you have to focus it. Um, if somebody does need a lawyer or you think that it is something that needs to go beyond your scope and you can help them by saying, you know, I really think you need to get legal advice. I think you really need to get law enforcement involved in this. Then that's something you can do, but you can't give the own, your, your own advice. Even if you do have it, the, the knowledge of it, it's not something that you're doing, you know, as a PTA leader. Um, you also do not want to solve the problem for them. You would think that that would be a great thing. Have somebody come in. This is wonderful. And they're going to solve the problem for me. Well, that's not that may be what they're looking for, but that's really not what you should do. It is very important that you try to give them the tools to help them resolve the situation themselves. You want that you want to ask them 
what a successful resolution looks like to them. And then you can make suggestions, but you want to let them find the ultimate resolution to their problem. That's the goal. The goal is to have them, with your help or guidance, resolve their, their problem, but you don't want to resolve it for them. Okay, one thing that we do not want to do is we want to do no harm. We are here to do no harm. If you have evaluated that you are the right person to address the issue, remember to never give professional advice, always maintain confidentiality, which is extremely, extremely important. Um, and get help and support for yourself if you need it. And handle off the situation if you do not feel that you are the appropriate person to handle it. So that's also very important. You might be able to um, still do the conflict um, resolution for them and be able to come in as the person that will help facilitate that. But you also might just need a little help yourself. So you might have to go to somebody else um, in PTA or maybe even in a, in a school building, uh, maybe a principal or even a superintendent for your own knowledge to just say, you know, am I handling this correctly? You might need to seek somebody else out to be able to help you. And that is okay. Um, as long as when you finally get down to it, that you are the right person for it. Okay, start strong, which is important. If someone emails you or they text you or they call you, you want to make sure that you have a quick response to the situation. Okay, because they're looking to, you know, they're looking for your guidance. So you want to make sure that you let them know, I received this. Now, you might not be able to handle it right away, but you will say that, say, you know, I'm on vacation this week, unfortunately, but I will definitely look at it when I come back or, you know, I'm working all day today. When I get home, I will definitely, you know, call you, but you want to have a quick response to the situation. So people feel they are being heard. You want to listen very, very carefully and you want to react slowly and document everything carefully. I would suggest that when you um, are going in for the conflict resolution that you have somebody else with you. You do not um, just do this by yourself, that you have somebody else there. Um, I know I have done that personally when called in for conflict resolution. And that person actually was my note taker and actually took notes so I could, I could concentrate on listening um, and paying attention to all the parties involved. And that person was taking notes for me so that I made sure that I documented everything, which is also very, very important that you document everything carefully because you want to make sure that you've heard everything. Uh, sometimes there might be a distraction and you want to make sure you're getting all the information. But then you want to set up a single point of contact to eliminate confusion. Like you're the person that's going to be contacted afterwards. So make sure they know how to contact you. Um, you want to ask many questions, but you want to avoid leading or loaded types of questions, which can only escalate the, uh, the uh, situation. You always want to remain neutral and you want to have a neutral person with you. Um, again, I would let them know that you're taking somebody else with you. This way they're just aware there'll be somebody else taking notes, make sure they're a neutral person, that they have no skin in the game as well, and that they will take notes for you. Um, those things are very, very important. Active listening. Now, there's nothing more important than being a good listener. This is not being a good listener. If I'm scrolling through my phone, checking my Facebook page, I'm not looking at you and I'm not listening to you. I may be listening, but I'm still not paying attention. So it's very, very important to always be a good listener and always be patient. You want to show nonverbal listening cues. Um, again, looking at your phone or looking around the room, those aren't very good nonverbal listening cues. You want to look straight at the person, focus on them, um, and really listen. Listen to what they have to say um, when they're speaking. Ask for clarification if needed. Um, always ask the parties what they want, okay? What, what does a solution look like to them? not what your solution is. Again, from what I had said earlier, it's not that you're there to you know, um, change the world and to solve everything. You're really not. You're there to listen and to help resolve the conflict. Um, you are there to facilitate them solving their situation. Also, 
very important. Even if you do have an opinion, which may happen, you don't want to take sides and you want to stay impartial. Okay, so it's something where you want to stay impartial. After hearing both sides, you know, you might be, uh, which is only natural, forming an opinion in your head. That's something that you don't want to put out verbally. You want to always stay impartial, always look like you're impartial, always ask, ask unbiased questions, and do not allow any personal complaints, comments on, on a, another person's personality or any form of harassment or bullying to take place. That is something that is extremely, extremely important. There can be no harassing of people going on during any type of a meeting, um, any bullying of another person. Person Bullying is never in any form acceptable um, and it needs to be immediately addressed if it starts to happen. You always have to encourage the group to address bullying and they need to have a clear plan of action if it occurs. Um, like let's say for instance, you're being called in because of a bullying incident. Um, maybe a suggestion would be to have them establish a code of conduct, which has to be you know, followed at all times and have everybody, all the parties sign it. Um, that's a way to control that, but that is never allowed. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about bullying in the next slide. Um, what is bullying? Bullying can be many, many different things and it means many different things to different people. It comes in many forms, but it is always very hurtful to the recipient. Regardless of what it is, it's hurtful. Some people may not even realize that they're a bully. Um, however, just think if you've ever acted out of frustration, if you've ever gossiped, if you've ever made somebody feel uncomfortable or bad about themselves, that may in fact have been um, a form of bullying behavior that people don't even realize that they're doing. Um, if, if it makes somebody else feel, feel bad about what you're doing or saying, it may be perceived as you being a bully. Um, so as someone being called in for conflict support, you never want to allow bullying to occur. And you also want to ask how you can help if bullying is the issue. Again, it must never be enabled and there has to be a clear conflict conflict plan um, should bullying be present. And if bullying gets to a point where it escalates, um, there may be somebody else that needs to be called in. You may need to um, encourage somebody to seek out law enforcement. Um, that is something that you're going to have to, you know, use your judgment on. If you see that it's something that is just beyond, you know, somebody not speaking correctly or speaking a little um, mean in, in a way, um, yeah, it might mean that you have to tell them, you know, this is something for, you know, legal, legal authority. So that's where you step back on that. Okay, complex or recurring situations. These are some situations that you might see when you are trying to um, resolve a conflict or you're being called in for the conflict resolution. You might see something that may occur um, answer shopping. This is where you're hearing about a particular person that is um, shopping around for the particular answer. They get an answer from, let's say, the building principal. So then they go to the teacher and then they go to a PTA leader and they're all giving them the same answer, but they don't like it. So they're trying to get a different answer from somebody that, that, that they like. So sometimes that type of situation might come up when you're looking to resolve a conflict, that somebody has already been answer shopping to try and get the answer that they think is the right answer. New people saying complaint. That means you're hearing the same complaint from many different people about the same person. So you might be in a, in a, in a group of people where you're there to help them and you're hearing the same thing from person after person that this particular person is doing something. So this is, these are things that may come up when you are trying to resolve conflict. Social media posts, um, we know that social media can be used for great things and we know that social media can also be used for not such great things and they can be a bullying tactic in many ways and they can be very harmful to an individual. Um, so again, regardless of what has been done or said, it might be something that can be quickly resolved or it may be something that again, needs to go further and this person might need legal advice. And that's when you really need to um, say that. You need to say, this is beyond um, my scope. I really 
cannot help you with this issue. This is something where you may need to reach out to, um, again, somebody higher than you, and um, that might be able to help them more. Um, they might request for more meeting support, um, which is fine. I mean, if they wanna have another meeting uh, with you, if you're not seeing that this is being resolved the first time, but if it's something where it's just going on um, for too many times, you might want to, again, bring it to somebody else. You might get requ requests from administrators to have a meeting with certain people. Um, these are things that can happen when you're talking about conflict support. You don't know what the situation is going to come from, where it's going to arise from. It might be a situation where a building principal is seeing something going on within some members of the PTA and they bring it to your attention and they say, can you step into the situation and see if you can you know, solve this conflict? Again, you're not there to solve it. You're there to help them solve the situation. When you have a team, a conflict team and an action plan, you should always make sure it's a minimum of two to four people. So I had said that you should always bring somebody with you. If you can bring more people with you, that's great. Um, there, you might not be able to do that. So there should really be a minimum of two people when you're going in to help solve a conflict. Um, the president can be involved. If you're a president of a unit, council, if you're a region director, you may be asked to go in, but of course, a vice president can go in, um, a, a chairman of a committee can go in. I mean, you're not going to ask uh, two other, let's say chair people of a committee, I mean, two other um, members of a committee to solve a conflict going on within the committee that might not, you know, those might not be the right people to ask to help step in. You might wanna ask the committee chair. If you're having an issue, let's say with the committee chair, then you may wanna to go to the vice president um, of the organization, the PTA in that unit that can maybe help you um, if that's um, who they oversee. If they oversee your committee, then that would be the person to go to. If there's nobody else and it's the president, then you bring it to the president um, and uh, the, that, then they can come in and help you. But it's not necessary for all a conflict resolution that it's the president. You should always designate one lead. Very important. You don't want two and three different people speaking out and asking questions. Again, the only reason why you're bringing somebody else is to be able to I used it as well as to document what's going on because careful documentation is very, very important. You wanna make sure you're hearing everything. If you wanna bring somebody to document and somebody to listen along with you, but there should only be one lead um, and that's the person that should be asking the questions. Um, you wanna gather and lay out all the facts. You wanna make sure you have all the facts. Um, you need to ask all the questions from both sides. If you have both sides there, that's the best way to do it. Um, I, I feel personal about that, that you would like to hear from both sides of the situation so that you're getting a clear picture, um, a conflict, um, you want to have an action plan. Um, after you are hearing the um, situation, you might want to gear them towards some kind of an action plan that, that, that would help them. And you want to have a clear endpoint. If this is going on for a very long period of time, then that's the time when you're saying that, you know, you can no longer be helpful in this situation. And this would be a time where you might need to pass it off to somebody else. Um, but you want to have a clear endpoint. You don't want this dragging on for weeks and months. Um, it's something that should be resolved. But if you're not the person to resolve it, then somebody else should be able to help you resolve it. Call in a pro. Of course, we've said this many times, if there is fraud or theft, an assault or other legal issues, um, any threats, um, this is when you would contact an attorney, have them contact an attorney. Um, if there's anything to do with contracts, employment, legal relationships, these are things where you are not to be involved in. Um, that's when I said, you know, social media, social media could be as much as, you know, someone posting something that you didn't really care for or somebody making a threat on social media. Those are two different things. If there's any type of, um, you know, like I said, theft, fraud, um, th these are times when you would need to call in, have them call in the authorities or, you know, contact a lawyer. Uh, this is beyond anything that you want to help them with um, and you don't want to give advice on that. Know when you need help. If resolving the conflict is beyond your capability, seek help and assistance. Again, I'm just gonna reiterate that, that's for yourself. 
reach out. If you're not the unit president, reach out to your unit president, your council president, your region director. They are there to assist and guide you when you are in need. I would also suggest that if you are, um, let's say, called in to uh, resolve a conflict, that you let your president know what you're doing. If you're not the president of the unit, you let them know. You tell them first, you know, I was called in, having a little bit of problems within this committee. They called me as the committee chairman or as the vice president to come in. I'm just letting you know that it's going to be here. Is this something you want me to handle or do you want to handle it? Um, so it's not necessary that the president handle it, but I believe that the president um, should know prior to you going in. And um, again, you can reach me, um, VP Vitali at NewYorkStatePTA.org. I hope that you enjoyed this and you got information that you need. Um, if you have questions, um, they can be answered later on, um, right after this is, um, I'm finished with um, now presenting, you can ask questions. And I will hopefully be able to answer um, anything that you have. If you have typed them in the chat, that's great. Um, I will be looking at them and I will try and answer as much as I can. We have about 10 or 15 minutes to be able to chat um, and I'm looking forward to it. So I really hope that you enjoyed this. You got a, little, a lot of information out of it and um, I'll talk to you soon.